will come to water. Roll call. Jerry's Plant. Mary Clark. Bob Bro. Doris Wazalowski. John Brigham. Vinyon Murray. Brenda Paquette. Lillian Halpin. And. Oh, <laughs> I would like to introduce Mary Parenta. Parenta? Uh, she's from the Protection Service Speaker. She will be speaking for 10 minutes. So, okay. Um, I am the Program Manager for Adult Protective Services um, and Elder Services of Western. We're located in Norfolk Street and we're part of the bigger Elder Service Program. So, the people that you know that are getting Elder Services, Home Care Services, we're part of that crew. We're actually one of the larger protective service units in the state. We have about, there's 25 of us all together that work in our unit. And our charge is to investigate reports of suspected elder abuse, neglect, exploitation, or self-neglect um, of elders in our service area, which Auburn clearly is in our service area. And what we need to have is, for us to get involved, we get reports from a variety of sources. Some people are mandated, so those are the people that hold a professional license who are would see elders as a regular plan. So we have social workers, council and aging directors. We have visiting nurses, physicians. We're very much like child detective. You know, child teachers are mandated to report. Those people who see elders are maybe a report to us about suspected elder abuse. The bulk of what we see are elders who are residing in the community. We can get involved in sometimes in assisted livings, rest homes, few nursing home situations, but by and large, the most of what we see are people that are living on their own, living with family, living in senior housing, living in trailers, living in their own houses, living in their car pretty much anybody that we can see. We average about 200 reports a month in Worcester. Um, of those, um, we probably investigate about 150 of those, and we probably substantiate that the abuse or exploitation occurred in about half of that number. So between 60 and 70 every month, we find that the elder have been abused or neglected, as was reported to us. For us to get involved, there has to be a personal relationship of some level with the elder and the abuser. So if we get a call from a housing authority who said the elder hasn't paid her rent and she's going to be evicted, and the, perhaps the housing authority director knows that the elder didn't pay her rent because her grandson just got out of jail and stole checks from the middle of the elder's checkbook. Like that's going to be something we're involved in because the grandson has obviously the personal relationship with the elder. If we get a call that the elder's not paying her rent because her purse was stolen when she was at Shaw's, that's not something we're going to get involved in because there is no personal relationship. Tenant-landlord <coughs> issues sometimes turn into, um, they're ones that we might not necessarily get involved in if it's strictly a tenant-landlord issue. Sometimes if what we're hearing is really problematic and sometimes people have been tenants for so many years that the landlord and that person might have become friends, that's something we can look at. The personal relationship piece is pretty key to what we do. Okay. I'm going to pass out. There's a little handy dandy handout that gives you a summary of pretty much what we do and then what happens after you make a report is also included in that. We, over the 200 reports we get a month, probably 100 of those are self-neglect reports. So those are folks that are at risk to their own inability to make good choices. 
And that can be because they have dementia, mental health issues, substance abuse issues, physical limitations. We've had people in the past who aren't paying their rent because they used to walk to the bank. Or they'd walk to the corner, check cash in place, and cash their checks and get their money. And now they can't walk anymore for whatever reason. It could be as simple as that. It can be just really bad judgment. They have determined that they're going to stay in their parents' house that their dad built until they die. And yes, there's no heat and yes, there's no roof, but they're going to stay there no matter what. As adults, and our, our cutoff is like your 60 is where we start, um, the difference is people have, people have the rights to make really bad choices in what we view as bad choices if we, they understand the consequences. So it's just like somebody coming to your house and telling you you shouldn't be doing a certain thing, whatever you're choosing to do. You know, you, people don't have the right to do that. And just because, you know, you're 80 and people think you should have heat, most of us think you should have heat, if the elders adamant that they do not want their heating system touched and they don't want their furnace repaired, we can't get them to do anything different. The difference is, if what we find or what you might have reported to us was you think the elder is pretty confused and might not understand, we can move forward. So if we go to see somebody with no heat and they think it's, you know, 1972 and they're waiting for their mom and dad to come back and they just got back from school, if that's our initial conversation and they tell us they don't want help, we're going to proceed. We have really close oversight by the Executive Office of Elder Affairs in Boston for everything we do. And they actually read our, they read our files in our computer system. So there's a lot of oversight. And to that end, there's a lot of... Our mission is to fix the problem in the least intrusive way possible. So there's going to be situations where we go in and we might just send meals in, and that might fix it. Somebody burning up pots and pans, we might get the stove unplugged, and that might fix it. Clearly, we all know that if someone's burning up pots and pans to the extent they need their stove unplugged, it's probably not going to be a far step before something else goes wrong. But if nothing else is going on wrong at that time, then we're going to not stay involved until the next time. We can go to the very end of the story. As so we're unplugging a stove, we can go up to going to court, petitioning the court, getting a guardian, and having an elder removed from their house, if it reaches that level. So we have a wide range of interventions we can use. I think we try to we do a good job of applying what needs to be done in this, each situation and not trying to overtake somebody's life if that's not necessary. Any questions on any of that? If someone came into you and it was something that was an easy fix that you were able to do, but they might have additional needs, are they screened in then to have like a caseworker and to work with elder, the normal, regular elder services? Right. If we if we get a call and sometimes it is something that could be maybe somebody didn't pass their housing inspection because the way their conditions of their apartments, if and they're not paying their rent. Well, if we can get the rent thing fixed and there's still an ongoing issue that might not require protective services. We would definitely refer on to the home care and see if services could go into our home care portion. We work an awful lot with other community agencies, with community services, with Jewish family services, with tenancy preservation. We work closely with multiple other community agencies. So if we see a need, even if it might not be protective, we hook that person up with that need. So if there's a case that we get reported to us that doesn't necessarily fit for us, other who had a purse stolen, we might try to find somebody else that can help address that situation with her rent and with her bills, even though it might not be us. And if you make a report to us, you should get a letter back that says whether we assigned it or not. And I always encourage all our reporters to call us back if you don't understand why we did what we did. Okay? Because sometimes it's a little detail buried in there that makes all the difference in the world to us, whether it's something we can do or something we can't do. And we like to have an ongoing dialogue as best we can to try to explain this is why we took it or this is why we didn't take it. As a reporter, we can never reveal who made the report to us. There's one exception to that. But 99% of the time, we can never tell who made the report. 
the elder might guess, especially if she's in and she's crying and she's upset and she's holding our eviction notice and somebody from here calls us and then we call her like two days later and say, hi, it's Mary, you got a call of concern, you might be having some issues with your rent, you might be evicted. We're never going to confirm or deny. You know, she says, oh, I know they called you. We're not going to confirm or deny that. The one exception is we're mandated to report to the district attorney's office for severe injury caused by physical abuse or caregiver neglect, financial exploitation over $250, and sexual assaults. So if it falls into one of those four categories, we have to refer to the district attorney's office. If they decide to prosecute after a police investigation, then they're going to come back to us and say, who made the initial call to you so they can start building their case for prosecution? Honestly, that happens one in a hundred times because the elders we're dealing with either are too confused to be a good witness six months after the fact, or, as I said in the beginning, there's a personal relationship. So we're calling the attorney's office and saying, you know, Betty Smith's grandson stole $2,000 from her. So now the police come and talk to Betty Smith and say, gee, you're, you know, we're checking into this, your grandson stole this money. She wants nothing to do with that. She doesn't want to get her grandson in trouble. She doesn't want her grandson to go to jail. She certainly doesn't want to go to the district courthouse and testify against him. So she's going to make that very clear in such a way that if she refuses to testify, they have no case. So that's why those are the two reasons that Paul the book would prefer to not get prosecuted. I would encourage people to keep calling us because sometimes they'll just say, no, I don't want your help, no, I don't want your help, no, I don't want your help, and it might be the fifth time we show up at their door that they're willing to listen to hear what we have to say. And we do have to see every elder that's referred to us that we assign to the investigator. We can't just, and we can't, and we can't just say, oh, she said, yeah, I called her, she didn't want me to come out. It's like we really have to, even if it's five minutes, we have to get our little story out to make sure that people at least have some idea that we exist and we can offer them help for whatever situation they're facing. And there is a telephone number for the <coughs> yes. abuse there's, hotline. Yes. There. There's always somebody at my office, 8 to 5, to take a call. And if it's after hours, holidays and weekends, there's a hotline number that they'll take a report as well. Any other questions? You know All right. right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. done a session like this. It was different um, meals programs all over the state. Um, they gave us a lunch which was different vendors that provide Meals on Wheels and congregate meal um, lunches um, and we saw different models of it. Um, and then last week I was at the Mass Council on Aging conference which is a yearly conference every October. Um, so I was there Wednesday and Thursday in Sturbridge. 
and I haven't had a chance to put all my notes together from that yet, but um, lots of different interesting things happening. Attended some sessions on um, creating a welcoming center, outreach efforts of um, communication via Facebook and Twitter, um, some protective services uh, like we just had on a larger scale um, presentation. Um, listened to the um, Elder Affairs Secretary. So got a lot of information. I'll try to put some of that together for you before um, next meeting. On capital projects, the generator work, I guess they came across a hard time finding a transfer switch to, to put it into our system. But I, from what I understand, they have found one now, but we're still waiting on when that's going to be installed. And I keep checking in with them every few weeks. Um, in the <coughs> front hallway, which has all the windows right before the new sliding, uh, sliding door to the lobby, um, we're going to be doing insulation in that, in that section and putting a heater in. Because if you've noticed already, on days it's slightly cold, it gets really cold because there's no insulation on that portion and there's no heater out there. And now we have a much bigger opening with our new door um, opening up. So we'll be working on that when the guys can come over and do it. Um, we've been researching options for, we have a line of capital money for $6,000 for a um, rear door, new rear door. So we've already replaced the rear door that goes toward the housing with a push button automatic door. So we've priced out um, two options for the kitchen door. Um, one being, it looks like the door we have now, the, you know, the new door that we installed, but it's just a, a normal door that you would open with a handle. So that would cost somewhere between, I believe it's two to $3,000 to put in and install. Um, the other option is to put one in that looks like exactly like the one that we put in that goes to the housing, which is a push button and opens just like that, same, same door. That would run probably between seven and $8,000. So we have only six in that, in that account, but um, I wanted to know the feedback from the Council on Aging of whether you think we should go with just a normal door that looks like the new one we installed, but we would have to, you know, open like a normal door. Or if it would be a good idea to try to find the money to either buy FASCO or buy different capital accounts that perhaps we could, you know, see if we could transfer anything to get that to be just like the door to the housing, <coughs> the automatic door. Does anyone have any, any thoughts on that? So you're only talking to get a thousand dollars from that. It would be one to two thousand dollars, probably. Um, it's maybe plus. Maybe plus. It would. It would come in. I think the quote was seven thousand something for the door itself, and then the electrician, electrician yeah, so getting it installed. It. No, yeah. So it would be somewhere probably between seven and eight, and what's in there is six. Yeah, so it's not. A opinion? I don't think that door is used enough. I was just going to have it automatic. Right. And you? you've got the new sliding doors now yeah. too. Yeah. So right. I think that that just so. I'm not going to the normal. old door. The yeah. normal door. The normal door. I need a motion. Yeah. I make a motion that we go with the new. I second it. I second it. Yeah. yeah. She already did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Joyce made a motion. Brenda seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you for that. Um, we're also we do have money in the in a capital line to purchase furnishings for the building. It was put in there um, well before my time, but there is currently uh, about just shy of $7,000 available to purchase furniture for the center. Um, so if, if anyone has any feedback about items they think we should be targeting, you know, we do have a new office that we may need to purchase another desk for either that or move the desk the dentist is using into there. Um, I think we're in need of some some office chairs that just aren't, you know, for the front desk staff and for Cheryl and myself that have been aging. Mm -hmm. um, another things that we've been looking into and we're open to feedback of if people feel there are, are bigger needs. But um, I would like to replace some of the furniture behind us with something that's a little easier to clean. Um, sometimes someone might have an accident or something might spill and this is cloth fabric. So it doesn't necessarily clean up as well if, if we got something that was like a, a vinyl or something that was a more, I don't know, an easier to clean fabric. Um, and then the other thing I've been looking into is, is getting a couple more tables that are like these that we could use in the pool room um, instead of the white ones that are in there. It might be easier if we had a bigger meeting in here, we could use more of these to 
to put out, or we could, those would fold up nicer and tuck away when other programs were there. But there's, you know, no definitive on any of that. We're open to the board's suggestion on where we think that money will be best spent. But those are some of the things that, you know, we've identified of, of looking around of what we might use that for. Does anyone have any other thoughts or priorities for that furniture allotment? I think that as far as the couch that's over there in the chair, I think that's fine. I mean, how many people use this to benefit? I think you could use the money on something else mm -hmm. instead of a new couch. I think, I think tables are more important. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I think a list should be made and brought to the next meeting, and then we'll vote on each item. Okay. Agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My thoughts, and as you're thinking about this when we bring the list, is that sometimes now we have a, a failure of space if we have something happening in different rooms, and it's difficult to get a larger event in here because it's, we can't really easily move out the larger sofa. Um, so even if we want to think about if we're finding that people aren't using these very much, as, as you say, perhaps we want to just get rid of the larger sofa. But if the other furniture can easily be moved if we need the whole space, but the sofa itself is kind of tricky to to get out of the space. Um, and we are, at, you know, when the um, red hats are in here, for example, they're, they're using space, we're pushing stuff back, um, but it's just really difficult to actually remove that from the space. So maybe we want to reconfigure it if we don't. When the red hats are in here, don't they just use this room? They're a big group and they have food out as well. They do just use this room, but it's, you know, it's tight. And they could benefit, and I think other groups could benefit from having yeah. a little more. A lot of people are eating they're taking their food and eating in that room. There's been a, there has been a lot of spills and. Well, I think it would close the door when they're right. having their meeting. So they're not they, in there. True. They, they're a big group, and I mean there are other big groups in here. That's just an example, you know, that um, we've had to move furniture for, and it's, it's just tricky to get out. Do we have a service to clean? We have our custodian, but we haven't had a service come in clean that I know of since I've been here. I don't know if it has been in the past. And I don't know how long that's been there. Does anyone know when that was purchased or acquired? What? The furniture. Um, it was all donated. I think the um, love seat was new, but I think that was donated as well. But everything was donated. Um, so are we, are we required to have a place for um, someone to lay down if necessary? No, I don't think so. Okay. I was going to say, excuse me, um, we have pitching here, you know, once a month. Mm -hmm. Historical society yeah. in the other room. We have no problem pushing all that furniture back. Yeah. We put 10 to 12 tables, card right. tables, right. in here with chairs. And oh. we, we've just not had a problem with that. Okay. I don't understand why the Red Hats don't have a problem with just moving all everything They don't. Back. They haven't voiced a problem. Okay. I don't want to say that that was. It's just an example of when there's a large group in this room. It was just a, an example. It's nothing on that specific group at all. It's I, just, yeah. I, I believe yeah. that if they're using this room and are only supposed to be using this room, that door should be shut. Okay. I, my point is really nothing to do with that specific group, but just more in, for example, we did a couple of test pilots in here that, um, were for 30-ish people were, was the target audience. And um, we didn't want to take up the dining room, and we didn't want you know people to be walking through. We didn't want to take that whole space. So we were in here. And it was challenging to to move everything out to a degree that you know we could. I just wanted to give us more um, flexibility. But we'll look at prices for different things. We'll bring it to you. We'll see what your your suggestions and priorities are, and, and we'll go from there. Okay. But like Bob said, if they're in here with food and then that door is open and they go in there and spill all over the place, that's not good. Yeah. It creates another problem. Yeah. So really, it should be really they should be having there. their meeting, right? So they don't really need no. to go into the library. How many of these long tables do they have up for their meeting? I mean, is there one table going across that way too? There are all of these and then there's usually at least one or two more brought in, I would think. Again, it's it's nothing for that particular group. It's just a, yeah. a space of when we want to use this. Is that the best use of, of that space? Especially if we're saying that not a lot of people use it. Do we need to keep it all then? 
or can we maybe just keep the chairs and the um, the love no. seat? No. You know, another thing, do we need all those books? I mean, it does look kind of cutsy. No. Messy. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. We've, it's just a dumping ground. We've been kind of, you know, we've moved things onto the new shelves. We moved the, the free book table out of the um, dining room. I think the last time we had a big event in there, that got moved out, so it kind of got moved in here. But I can work with the volunteer to see if we can. I think we should have a book sale. Right. Yeah, there's a book sale. Well, we, can, we, do it. we can talk to Vasco about doing that. Yeah. You know, when you talk about eating in that room, do we really need those big jars of um, amber crackers? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now there's two jars. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Who put them there? I don't know. I think a volunteer put them there. Okay, the volunteer can take them back. We appreciate their thoughtfulness, Thoughts. but no food in that room anymore. Well, no, wait a minute. We have served in here. You do? Yes, when you had the, um, uh, the uh, one of the meetings that you had for the, uh, had, was serving food, right? And again, I've seen it several times. Uh, they came in here with the ice cream. Remember that? The ice cream social? That was in here. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were serving food here one day when uh, it was the, uh, uh, the program that you had for uh, keeping your house or selling it. Remember yeah. that? It was food in here. Oh, Everybody right. was, was, right. was picking yeah. up food. So you're, you're bringing the food in here, which is not the idea of, you know, of, yeah. the, of, the, of, the, of the room. There, there are certain programs that, if for the Aging Mastery Program, for, for instance, that's we're not hosting that here. We're hosting at the library. Food is a portion of that program. Yeah. It's a required portion. Um, so there have been, and there have been, you know, different meetings that we have had food for. That isn't necessarily what I'm inferring is is spillage over there. Um, we haven't, that I've seen, had too many issues with people spilling, um, but there are concerns of, of different people's hygiene and, and, you know, there have been sicknesses and things that can happen. I'm, I'm inferring more to that than actual food spillages in this room. I think people have been pretty considerate with their use of food mm -hmm. in this area. Excuse me, going back to the books again. Do we have the, the library and the flag time flyer? Bob, do we have no. anything about the library and the flight time? No. We ought to put some kind of a, an item in there saying that uh, we have large print, regular print books that are free for people mm -hmm. that are interested mm -hmm. in yep. coming up here and taking a look at them. Because some people don't even know that this is up here. I think that's a very good idea. Mm -hmm. While well, we're on the furniture, thing. <clears throat> it has been mentioned that we could use some new card tables because the other ones are starting to fall apart. Okay. They're very rickety, yeah. they're very difficult. Yeah, right? yes, very definitely. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes with the um, leftover um, state formula grant money, we've, we've done that over the years. But it's been a while that we've had any, and, the, and they're not easy to find either. How about if we have people that the donate them? Yeah, but before yeah. anybody orders the tables, excuse mm -hmm. me, we need to have several of us looking in on it because the last tables that were ordered are so big and so heavy. Right. It's too hard for they need us to young see. people to try and pick them up sometimes. Is they there need a, the leather ones. They're hard. They're tough to find, the leather. Is group. there a preferential size that the groups like? Just a regular cut. Yeah, the regular, regular, regular. But the leather bound tops. Yeah. Not the plastic. No, that You can't even write on those. No. Yeah. yeah. And some of those tables have those bad legs, too, even the leather ones. No. Some of them say Cavendish Club underneath. Yeah, that's right. the, They're the not even people. ours, I don't think. Right, the bridge people donated some of them. Because they come once a month. Okay. Can we go with the upcoming programs? Sure. Oh, can I ask a question still on the building projects? Um, are they still going to put in the side panels from the outside doors so that, you know, yep. it won't blow across? Uh, is that still in the works? I believe it is, yes. Yeah. We, we brought up to them that this new um, roof that was out at the rear door, um, perhaps would it be too difficult for them to do a couple of side panels so that if someone was standing under it from snow getting it, you know, it would just help. I believe that is still in their thought process. They were doing a, a project over at Town Hall. I don't know when they're next here, but I would think that, that would, they're still intending to do that and that there's still is money to do so. 
Thank you. Just one more question. Yeah. I'm sorry to bring the card tables up again, no but problem. what I'd like to know is when we get new card tables, what are they going to do with those old ones? Because right now we're just stacking and stacking and stacking the card tables till they're coming out to the middle no floor. Yeah. We should throw some. We, we got to find a place to put the old card tables. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a look at it. We'll see. We'll speak with the groups. Okay. We'll look into prices and sizes. We'll see how many we need, okay. and you know, we'll try to just keep what needs to be in that room and not make it a collection of of past tables. Okay. Do we I really would appreciate it very much if um, you would work with that with Ed Sweeney because he is very good at uh, figuring out what tables we need and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we Thank need you. to uh, have an approval to get rid of anything? Yes. We can't just, because it's municipal just get owned, rid of we it. can't just get rid of something. There, okay. There's a process and we would have to look into that and um, see if they're needed elsewhere in town right. and go through that process. <laughs> right. but that's not to say we would need to leave them in that room. We could, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps put them in a shed, perhaps put them in the garage, find somewhere while we go through that process before we are able to get rid of them. Okay, okay. Up upcoming program. So the Sutton Serenaders, which is um, Sutton's singing group, is coming actually today at 1245. Um, we have a storyteller named Davis Bates coming next, uh, this week. <laughs> I hate short weeks. They mess me up. I never know what day is what day. No. I'm going to think it's Monday all day. Um, Davis is coming on Thursday the 15th at 10 o'clock. Um, this is something that I think we spoke about before. The town clerk has offered to do on-site services for residents. Um, so she is going to be starting that um, this month. So it's the third Thursday of each month at between 11 and 12 a.m. What are they going to do? They are going to do um, notary services. I think, believe it's anything that you would normally do with the town clerk you would be able to do here. So what she wrote in the newsletter was um, notary service, voter registrations, um, etc. Dog registrations or anything they can do to help. There is a notary fee of one dollar per signature. And so the first time she's going to be here is October this this Thursday, October fifteenth, from eleven to twelve a.m. Eleven to twelve p.m. Um, the drop-in tech clinic, which has been started by a volunteer, has gone very well. He's had quite a group every week, and everyone has responded very well to him. So he's continuing to do that. Um, FASCA has their chicken dinner coming up on this coming Monday, the 19th. I believe over 100 tickets have been sold now for that. Um, name That Tune Trivia, Tuesday, October 20th at 10.30 a.m. Um, a Shine presentation. Some people have asked, is this uh, like the Shine counselor that they meet with them? This is a larger presentation, so they'll be presenting to a group, but I'm sure there's lots of opportunity to ask specific questions people might have um, about Medicare, health insurance, anything to those topics. Um, Senator Moore's turkey lunch is Friday, November 6th. And um, there was a singer recently that was in for another group that people really enjoy named Marty. And Brookdale has um, sponsored them to come in November 30th um, to perform, I believe it's... One o'clock. One o'clock. Thank you, Bob. That was the afternoon. Getting back to uh, number five, that's the chicken dinner. Um, Again, I think you should announce what the price is, and you have to call for a reservation. So what is the price? The price is $6. I don't, I was out of the office a couple of days last week. Are tickets still on sale? I or are they I stopped? I they think stopped. they have stopped at this point. Okay, so the um, should be brought up yeah. so people are watching this. Sure, okay. I believe that we, we have an ad for it in the newsletter. I believe that we do, and people can call but our... We can all, look, a lot of people don't get the newsletter, so... If it's announced on TV, it's a good idea. Sure. And also, um, Senator Moore's turkey lunch. There's no charge, correct? There is no charge for Senator But you have to call lunch, for reservation. Yes, you do definitely need to call for reservation. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I have one more question on that uh, Sutton Serenade. Yes. Okay. Is that in the dining room? Yes. Yeah, that's down here. No. Yes. Is it in the dining room for twelve forty-five? Yes, I believe so. Then we have to come in here for this. Yes. Oh. Sorry about that. Well, you can really listen to the service. Yes, it would be very interesting. Now, I'm sure it's already <laughs> set up in there, so we'll have to just move them back. I'm here. sorry about that, Tracy. I'm going to need help taking these tables down. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other concerns? A shine presentation on October thirtieth. 
That's a Friday. So the dominoes will have to be in here. That is actually the same day and same time, roughly, as the um, the large meal, the Halloween meal that the yeah. dining room is doing. So um, I believe that um, Shine will be in the pool room. We can probably fit in there. So the group could be, your group could be in here, and the Shine presentation we can fit in the pool room, okay. I believe. So I don't think it will be, I think they'll be able to fit in there comfortably enough. And that's right. for what? For the uh, dominoes? Yeah, right. So we won't be in the dining room? Those are both Fridays. What kind of tables? Are, or, do we have bigger tables that we could use for the, for the square? We can bring round tables. No, they bring the round tables in here. Oh, they yeah, do? We can bring yeah. some oh, okay. here. Right. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. They've, they've been able to fit that here yeah. before on the rare occasion. We try not to do it too often. Now, are there any other concerns? We need a bigger facility. <laughs> well, eventually we're going to have that porch out there closed in. That'll give you a lot of space. Right. Uh, work group reports, newsletter. Um, <coughs> I, we lost a day because of uh, Columbus Day, and there's uh, two days where I have to have some medical work done. So, and um, they're going, Lynn tells me that they're going to draw the FASCA gift certificate winner um, the ninth, is it the 19th we did dinner? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hold a newsletter to get that winner's name into the bulletins to show people who won. won every month. Right. So they told me that's important. Right. Anything else? And what the certificate was for? It's a twenty-five dollar certificate per trip. To who? Yeah. A basket trip. A basket trip. A basket trip? I thought it was no. Happy's. It's not what? I no. thought it was Happy's. It's Happy's. It's not, not a basket trip. Twenty-five. Yeah. Twenty-five dollars for for Happy's. Not for a basket trip. Oh, it's not for a basket. Well, no. it doesn't say basket trip. It just says gift certificate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. They might do one for that. Eventually, oh, because not so, everybody wants to take trips, so why right. would they have that? No, so, I don't believe they should. No, it was no a, I don't think it was. No. I think you're right. It was it's happy. happy. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first time I heard it was fast. Right. right. Yeah. No, no, no. And I'm here every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Fast so Guy is entering after the other day. day. So. Oh, Lack of communications, Bob. What's your date for uh, having everything submitted? 20th. Ten days before the end of the month, they want it. But I thought you said it was going to be drawn on the 19th. It is. Okay. All right. Oh, business. The Community Service Award. We need a date, and we also have voted on to have Wayne Page to receive this award. So we need a date. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we have the date the same as the previous years when Senator Moore is here. And we have the biggest we crowd already ever discussed that, for Bob. dinner. We you? already discussed that at the last meeting, and we said it would be a special day in the morning and ask Senator Moore to come. We didn't vote on that. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. We did. We did. It was my understanding that we were all going to think about it yeah. and discuss it here okay. today. Yeah. I think we, we brought up both options, that we could have it at a separate time and all invite right. the senator, or we could have it at the dinner, and we want everyone to bring their feedback back, I think. Right. That's the time where we have the most people ever right. here for, for Wayne to honor him, and also because the senator won't have to make a special trip. He's already here, right. and he's used to making the presentations. Do you want to make a motion on this? I make a motion. Do you need a minute. second? All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Now that's the turkey lunch on, on November 6th? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, now we have to notify Wayne so that he'll be there. <laughs> be nice. Does, does Wayne know he's getting the award? I don't think so. Nobody said anything and they shouldn't have told him if they did. Okay. Wait till he's notified. Okay? Who's going to notify him? Mignon. I will notify him. Okay. Then you'll let me know, Mignon, because I've been working on this. You want to do that in a letter form? Sure. Thank you. In that vein, <clears throat> we had some boys working in here that did a great job fixing up the different areas, and they've done it at the library, 
And uh, I think we should do something for them. You know, it's kind of, been, kind of been nice to have them work for us and do all this work and, and, and fix, the, uh, fix the facility up. And they're doing a great job. And, uh, I think we, are, we should recognize that. We can recognize them, but they also get paid for it, don't they? Well, they yes. well, it's part of their job. Right? Right. That's their job. Perhaps the council would like to write them a, a letter of thanks for the quality of work yeah, that they like provided. That. Some, I think that would like that. be appreciated. Yeah. I certainly speak, when I speak to anyone about their work, I think it's fantastic and speak of their, their wonderful work. Do you want to work. bring it up at the PASCA meeting? We can bring it up at the PASCA meeting, but also if the council wants to, you know, if someone wants to write a, a thank you for the, the work, I think that would be appreciated by them if the council wants to recognize their contributions, but we can also bring it up at FASCA as well. Yeah, I think that's a good idea because, uh, you know, they've done a wonderful job. I, I just, uh, I can't get over what great job. Christmas party. So, um, Cheryl and I discussed for a date and decided on um, Monday, um, December 14th at 1 o'clock for the Christmas party. Uh, it was discussed at FASCA, and they voted to um, hire the same entertainer that we had last year. Moto, I believe this is his name. He's an accordion player. And also to have a professional Santa Claus come in um, so that someone had in the group had seen before and spoke very highly of. Um, so I believe those have both been um, contacted. I've not heard otherwise. Um, and that they would also provide the, um, the food for the event. Who was providing the food? Basca. Fifty dollars was the price. Huh? Fifty dollars was the price. For the Santa. For, For the Santa, Santa and the music. Oh, okay. What about it's the food? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the food. <laughs> I don't think we put a dollar amount on the food. No, we didn't. <laughs> But, and I believe we also, they also voted to keep it a free event. There was a discussion about that. Am I remembering that correctly? That we free. It was a free event again this year. Yes. Yeah. Okay, any more questions on that? The RSVP letter writing to veterans. Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, there have been some concerns raised that, um, when it went out in the newsletter for the RSVP letter writing, that it was um, encouraged and mostly for members of RSVP, which is uh, Retired Services Volunteer Program. Um, we do have a great deal of, of RSVP members here. Um, and I spoke to them about whether, what if someone from the community came in and wanted to write letters but did not want to join the program. Um, and I spoke with a supervisor who, who does this program. and. Um, it was her uh, prerogative of it that um, it is a program for their volunteers. If it, you know, if a person came in, that's okay. But she, it is mostly for those members of RSVP, and it, because they are providing the um, picking up the letters, the materials to write the letters, the company that they are engaged with to send the letters. Um, so I told her that I, I completely understood that, but that I would be taking that back to my council and that we would discuss it of whether that was something we were comfortable with. Um, we've booked them in for this month and next month, so the event hasn't happened yet, so we don't know what kind of response we're going to get. Um, from my perspective of it, I thought it was a good program. I thought writing to the veterans was great. I thought it'd give our RSVP members a chance, but I completely understand the other side of it of, we don't want to be inclusive. We want to have programs that anyone can participate in. So I'm open to the ideas of the council. I want to keep the two dates that we have because we've we've put that out there with them. Um, but going forward, I told them I needed to discuss it with the council and see what their opinion is. Um, it's something that if we wanted to, we could look for a volunteer from ourselves to, to run a similar program if we wanted to. Um, I don't have those connections in place myself as of yet of, of knowing who takes these letters or who sends them and what's appropriate to send. Um, but I'm open to discussion from the council of, of how they would like to go forward with this or if they would like the event to happen and see how it goes, if it's a worthwhile endeavor. Um, those are the two sides of, of that program. But if you're not a member of the RSVP, you cannot attend. So how are you going to judge? You could, I'm sure you could attend and see. Um, they would probably ask you if you would want to join. They also, um, it's Worcester that's getting credit for this, and they're coming here and getting credit for what we're doing. 
Well, RSVP, we have a great number of RSVP members who are um, from receptionist to dining room who come and are RSVP members and get credit as RSVP members, but volunteer at our site. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't look at it in a different way than that. Um, you know, we're, we're giving an opportunity to people who are more local here to do a program they might not go to Worcester for, who might be RSVP members, but I'm open to, to what the council suggests for it. I thought it was a, a worthwhile try, but I don't want any group to think that you have to be a member of this to go to this. You know, so if we want to not have, you know, a program like that, that we just want to, that we're more comfortable having something that anyone can attend, then we could go in that direction. Any questions, any answers, any thoughts on it? We want to see how it goes this first time. And give, I can give you some feedback of how many people attended. You know, it might be that no one chooses to attend. It might be that some of our engaged RSVP members do attend. I might get feedback that someone tried to attend and wasn't comfortable. I could bring that feedback back to you, and we could go from there. Well, what if the RSVP says, well, we can't accept it unless you become a member? Well, I just don't understand what's going on. Yeah, well, that's the... RSVP is a... Um, so you're going to write a letter and then they're going to say, well, we're not going to send it? No, you would come to the event. It's a letter writing event. Right. So it's... Um, if there was perhaps one person who wasn't a member and they wrote a letter, that's fine. They, they don't want... It's a program they've devised for their their volunteers. So they, they offer it at Worcester as well. They you know they're, have RSVP members there as well and they write letters and they the organization sends them to... Um, I understand that, but I don't understand the other part of it. Um, a trial one's going to be run on when? What's the date of that? Let's see. I believe it's the last Tuesday in February. Tuesday in February. Yeah. I want to say it's the 26th 26th. Of this month. At 10 o'clock is the first one that was scheduled. What day? 20, Monday the 26th at 10 o'clock of October. And I did express our concerns that, um, you know, that we wanted, you know, what would happen if, if there was a group of people and they didn't want to join. Um, and they were specific that this is a program they offer for their, their volunteers. They're always looking for more volunteers and that um, they weren't willing to facilitate it if it wasn't mainly their their volunteers because their work and supplies were going into it. They want new volunteers but yet they don't want people to come in and not volunteer. I don't understand. That. No, they would like people to come in but they would also like them to join their their program. They're federally funded, they you know, based on the numbers that they have and they do a lot of good work for us in a lot of areas of the center. But if this specific program isn't a good fit, it's not a good fit. It's open to, to suggestion. I would like to honor the, the couple of dates that we've put in place, but going forward from that, you know, if the group decides it's not something we want, then it's not something we want. Well, I think you should try it and see how many people show up and see if it's worth having. Okay. Think you ought to try it. If it doesn't work out, just yeah, try it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can we move on? Uh, question on the open house. The open house occurred. Um, it was a small group. Uh, we had a lot of volunteers who were here willing to talk about their their program or show people around. We didn't get a huge group. We got probably maybe 10 to 15 people max who came by. Um, it did give people an opportunity to see the center, to learn about some programs, some trips. Um, but it was a small, <coughs> small group. But I thought it was a worthwhile endeavor to open this up at a time people might not be able to attend. They might want to bring their family. They might want to um, just check it out without the pressure of having to be there for a specific event. I didn't come, but I understand there was somebody here that was soliciting places to move and condos and so forth, and we cannot do that here. 
they were a sponsor. They, uh, an Auburn resident who works for the company. That, but they um, were soliciting okay. people, and that should never be done here. Right. They, they did have some materials up. They were talking to people about it. Um, when we have a food sponsor for a different event, often there's someone there from the company, so I didn't think it too out of the box, but I do think that if we have an open house in the future, it should be a strictly yeah. us affair and there should not be a, a sponsor for it, that we should do it internally, perhaps ask BASCA for a donation so that we can keep it just at the center and, and no conflicts there at all. Right, because this can never be done. It's yeah. against the rules of the town. What, what, what is the sponsorship? Pay for that? No, often. How does, how does that work? Sure. Uh, we we cannot solicit someone to come in and donate something mm -hmm. to us or to give us food for something. We can't do that as council on aging members, right, myself and staff. But groups often come in and ask if they can sponsor a program. Um, for example, the um, the singer that I spoke about, who's going to be coming in November, um, Brookdale is sponsoring them, so they're paying for them to come. We're getting the benefit of the program. They're getting their name out there, but and is that different than somebody that wants to sell a, a condo or something? I didn't see it as as such, but I think as for an open house, it probably would be better for us to keep it just us, okay. no outside influence I, I guess at all. The open house, okay. That's that's kind of my opinion of it. Okay. Boy training. Um, just a reminder that um, the town is having their um, board training for anyone who wants to attend on October 21st, and the RSVP date is um, coming up tomorrow. So if anyone, <laughs> all right, well I know you have one, but in case you want another one, no. <laughs> um, so that's coming up. If anyone wants to attend, please let um, Pat from Town Hall know her information is on there. Um, as well, last meeting, I believe it was mentioned that um, the Mass Council on Aging offer some specific Council on Aging trainings, um, and so I have those dates as well. So I referenced them, so if anyone is interested in attending one, here are the ones that are um, coming up. I have applied for the one on the 29th I'm going to Framingham. Mm -hmm. It's at 8.30 in the morning on the 29th. Uh, I'd like to know if anybody else would be interested in the one. It's a Thursday. I have already registered for it. Thank you. <clears throat> I think some people have probably gone in the past. Um, they're often run, the Council on Aging one, by um, Emmett Schmarzo from the State Elder Affairs Office. Um, Emmett is a very dynamic speaker. You often learn a great deal beyond what you were there to actually learn. Um, so if anyone is interested in joining Jean, I'd encourage them to do so. It's always an interesting case. You always come, across, come away with something that you may not have um, known before. Are there any other comments or announcements? There are no citizens here, so there will be no citizen comments. I need a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. I second it. Uh, Ava. Aye. 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 So move.